This is my capstone making history in 3D. Uh, before I get into the actual need that my client had, I, I feel it's necessary to give a little bit of a background. And we all know of Google Earth as being a great online resource. Most people see it as an online map, but it's far more than that. When the 3D layer is turned on, this is New York City, each of these buildings contains information. So when you click on it, you can find out more about the building. You can see additional pictures or links. And you can see the newest Freedom Tower that's being created on the 9-11 site. And if it was zoomed in further, you can actually see the cranes are on the roof because it's still being built. So Brattleboro, Vermont has no 3D buildings. No one's created them, so there's nothing there. This really limits us to finding out about Brattleboro, Vermont. Right now, we are here on that grayish black splotch. You really can't get a feel for what Brattleboro is. We can't learn the history because there's nothing to click on. If you turn on some other layers, you may have images or pictures that might be available, but you don't have that 3D building aspect of it. In my hometown, of uh, White River Junction, Vermont, in Hartford, Vermont, we have 170 3D buildings live within our town. These were created by students in my classroom. And when you click on these buildings, each one has a history of the building, why it was built, who built it, and maybe some current uses. It also has uh, valuable resources in there where it links to our website, which has a town history attached to it. <laughs> this led to me being introduced to my eventual client, Jeff Renard. Jeff Renard's the program director for Vermont Virtual Learning Communities. This is an online school which allows any student in Vermont that is attending a participating school, which is almost every high school in Vermont, where they can take an online course. Maybe it's not offered in their school and they're interested in it, or maybe it just doesn't fit their schedule because they're doing band course or they have after school activities that make it so they can't get the help that they need. So there's programs within VTVLC that are a real benefit to students in Vermont. So when he asked me to teach, I, I became part of what was known as phase one. And as part of phase one, we were asked to teach canned courses from uh, Florida Virtual School. These were pre-made. They had all the lessons in place, all the quizzes in place, any forum conversations were in place. All we had to do was facilitate this course. The problem is, is that it costs money. Each CAN course costs money, and each seat within the CAN course costs money. So the client need became, we have to replace these CAN courses with organic teacher-made courses. And the grant that we've been using on this is running out at the end of this school year. So it became a real immediate need to start replacing these. If we don't replace them, then schools in Vermont have to start paying for these VTVLC courses. So this immediate need became something that I started thinking about. As part of phase one, I got introduced to Marlboro College. Life will never be the same. Um, <laughs> this was my first course, Configuring Networked Learning Environments. And I learned how it is to be an online student, but also how it is to be an online teacher. Because whenever you're a teacher, you're always looking at how would I use this stuff with my students. So this was my introduction to online teaching. And it really started realizing that a lot of what I do can be transferred to an online curriculum. So my recommendation was to take my current 3D course, and this was a website that I actually built during a few of my classes during the initial Marlboro College courses for my face-to-face -face classroom. And my recommendation is to turn this face-to-face -face classroom into an online class that can be taught through VTVLC. So the solution became a Moodle that I've created, which is my online course. And every student that, my goal is every student that is at a participating school can take this course and have the same experience as my face-to-face -face students have had. The way the course is set up is that I broke it down into four units. Each unit can be taken individually. I set it up so they're quarter, nine-week courses. So you can take a one-quarter SketchUp course or a one-quarter Google Earth course or you can take the entire thing as a full credit over the course of the entire year. Each unit is broken into lessons. Within the lessons, students are really visual, so I have video tutorials in every single lesson, and I also have some readings. After you go through the lessons, there's quizzes and assignments that are there to show that we know the students are actually learning the material. 
<coughs> I also have many forums in place so students can communicate online, help each other out, and maybe just say, here's the cool thing that I learned while doing this lesson. As I started developing this course, I realized very quickly I need to have someone test this class. Jeff Renard, my program director through Virtual Learning Cooperative, told me that he would do it. So he went in and he started checking it out. And I realized he's not evaluating the course. He's evaluating the logistics of the course. He would go in and say, here's what needs to be fixed in your grade book. Maybe you need to add some forums. But he wasn't actually evaluating the lessons themselves. So I had three students come to me early in December asking if they could do an independent study with me. Instantly, I kind of suckered them into being my beta testers. Word got out and two more students joined. So I now have five beta testers that are running through the course. And this is them working on the course in their, in their spare time. They became invaluable to me because students catch things that teachers don't understand. I watch a lesson. I'm able to do the assignment. I'm able to do the quiz. Students catch all the little things that you don't even realize. Some of the lessons that I put on there were for a previous version of SketchUp. And they caught those instantly, so I was able to update those lessons and make it more relevant to the SketchUp 8 that just came out. So the results. This course is offered in the fall through VTVLC to any student that's at a participating school, as well as any student at Hartford High School. And a little added bonus is, through just last week, Jeff Renard presented this with CCV, and they agreed to offer it as a dual offering. So anyone that takes this course can also get it as a college credit. Now, this has been quite a process for me. I like to end with, I created this in SketchUp just to kind of show you how easy it is. Um, I started learning SketchUp and instantly fell in love with it because I realized it's a, it's a tool to make me interested in history. And I've always struggled with having students become interested in history. So as I learned SketchUp, it led me to being introduced to Jeff Renard. And Jeff Renard got me in involved in online teaching, got me to Marlboro College. Through that, I've created this capstone, capstone process, capstone project, which has, this is completing my MAT. And I'm shocked at the number of opportunities that are starting to open up. Now I'm teaching what could be a college level course. I'm being asked to go to individual towns to help towns get started with SketchUp history within their town. And I was going to put a door at the top, because I always feel like I'm going through new doors. And don't, but I don't feel like this is a door opportunity. I feel like I'm kind of jumping off a cliff, <laughs> because it, it's something that when you get into this, you never really know what the next step is. And I find people expect me to know everything there is to know about computers and technology. And I know this. <laughs> and virtually nothing else. I had to learn how to do the Moodles. Luckily, I had some classes at Marlboro that helped. But I feel like the opportunities are there. And I'm going to take the leap and see what happens with it. Thank you. Thank you.